pray. Father God, as we look at your son, Lord, how can we, how can we do anything but fall to our knees and worship you, Lord? You went to the cross to die for our sins. That is such a just staggering thought, Lord. And as we sing these words, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you did for us. In your name, amen. This is the time in our service where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Um, there are men in the front with Bibles, and they'd love to get one in your hands. And so um, just raise your hand, and they'll bring one to you. And if you don't have a Bible, uh, we'd love that you just keep this one. Um, it's our gift to you. Um, and as they're handing that out, go ahead and turn to Psalm, uh, the 33rd Psalm. So th in this time, we're preparing our hearts for the Lord's table. And in a minute, men will come and pass out a piece of cracker symbolizing Christ's body and a little cup of juice symbolizing his blood, which was spilt to save sinners. Um, Christ, when he initiated the Lord's Supper, he said to do this in remembrance of him. And that's what we're here to do this morning. And today, um, as we're looking at Psalm 33, I wanna give you a little bit of background why I went there today. Um, as I was preparing for my build lesson this week, I came across Psalm 78. So logically, I would probably be talking about that, but um, verse four of Psalm 78 said, we will not conceal from them, we will not conceal them from their children, but tell to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wondrous works that he has done. This stood out to me because in the context of teaching our children about God, sometimes I forget that we're bringing them praises and the strength of his wonderful works. We may be bringing them the gospel, we may be teaching them the things of God, or helping them understand how to apply a biblical worldview in their context. And all of that is teaching them to praise God. But is that where I put my emphasis? That led me to think about my own approach to God's word. How much am I praising God for his strength and his wonderful works? So as I contemplated these things, my mind immediately went to this chapter and really the first section of it. Um, this short passage, the psalmist gives us 10 reasons to praise God. And I wanna review those quickly today as we prepare our hearts for communion. So let me read Psalm 33, verses one through eight. Sing for joy in Yahweh, O righteous ones. Praise is becoming to the upright. Give thanks to Yahweh with a lyre. Sing praises to him with a harp of 10 strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of Yahweh is upright and all of his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his loving kindness. The, by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap, and he lays up the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The psalmist, the psalmist puts a lot of emphasis on the way to praise Yahweh. He says to sing for joy. He says to give thanks. He says to sing with a harp of 10 strings. He says to sing a new song and to play skillfully with a shout of joy. This isn't a quiet prayer of thanks, but it's a consistent, diligent, from the heart, joyful response to a knowledge of who Yahweh is and what he has done. What generates that kind of a response to Yahweh? Well, we get to see that right here. He doesn't just ask the audience to respond, but he gives them 10 reasons to praise God this morning. And that's what I wanna do with us today. So briefly, we're going to look at these 10 reasons. The first one is in verse four. It says, the word of Yahweh is upright. Putting that another way, the word of Yahweh is without deception and full of integrity. The second um, reason to praise is also in verse four. It says, his work is done in faithfulness. Not only is his word full of integrity, but his work is too. God is faithful. Verse five says he loves righteousness and justice. He judges, 
He rewards and punishment, punishes. He gives life and death. He raises up and he humiliates. Whatever he does is righteous. Whatever he does is just. Whatever God decrees is right. And whatever he brings to pass is faithful and true. What a sweet thing to meditate on as we praise our Lord. Verse 5 continues and says, The earth is full of his loving kindness. Yahweh's love is evident all around us. What a sweet thing to praise our Lord for. And then as we move to verse 6, the fifth and sixth reason to praise him are there. And it talks about his power in creation. He made the heavens with his word. He made everything with his breath. What an amazing, powerful God we have in that he created this world with just his word. The last four reasons to praise Yahweh are in verse 7. And they show his power over creation. He gathers up the waters of the sea. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. He spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Yahweh is great and worthy of our praise. And as we contemplate the fact that he is just, we need to look at our own lives. Are we worthy of his mercy? Of course not. His mercy on Christians is the most amazing thing to praise God for. He loves righteousness and justice. And 2 Corinthians 4, 6 tells us an amazing truth. It says, For God who said, Light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Meaning the same power described here in Psalm 33 that made everything with his breath is the power that shines God's light into a sinner's dark heart through Christ. That's the power that's needed to save sinners. Christian, as we seek to praise Yahweh this morning, we need to remember that God's power in and over creation worked in your heart through Christ to change us. We needed that much power so that God can remain full of integrity, faithful, righteous, just, and full of loving kindness. All of these traits work together to save sinners. That is amazing. And those that don't put their faith in Jesus to save them will feel all of these traits in a very different way. If you don't believe that Jesus came to earth to save you, I want to beg you this morning to recognize how much you need this Savior. Recognize how Yahweh sees your sin and seek his forgiveness. Put your faith in him and trust that he will forgive those sins. However, if you do not do that this morning during communion, please just let the bread and the cup pass. This time of communion is a time of worship reserved for those who put their trust in Jesus. And if you have questions, I'd love to talk to you after the service, any of the elders would, or the person that brought you. We'd love to talk to you about our Savior. Men, can you please serve us? And then, as they do, take communion on your own this morning, and I'll be back to close us in prayer.